Hey, welcome back everybody. So, as most of you that follow the channel know, it's been a while since I've put up any content and I kind of did a discussion on that in my uh, last video talking about the 600 subscriber giveaway. So if you want some more information on that, uh, just go watch that video. But anyway, sooner or later, I knew there'd be one thing that would kind of get me uh, out of my cave and back into the uh, gaming community. And what that is or has turned out to be is the arrival of my A Song of Ice and Fire pledge from uh, Cool Mini or not. Uh, obviously, I backed this last year. And I think everything has arrived. I, I don't really remember the pledge I did. It wasn't the highest pledge, but it was one of the uh, the the stretch goal pledges. So that meaning you got everything other than like add-ons and things. So and there's actually some pretty decent add-ons which I, I didn't get. Most of them were alternate sculpts. But uh, I know a lot of these are starting to pop up. I mean, by these I mean unboxings. But I recently joined the. Uh, song of ice and fire facebook page and uh one of the reasons i joined the page is i can't find any real good videos of people really starting to paint on their their pledges now i know it hasn't went general retail until probably after gen con maybe september or october more likely uh and that's kind of a long time to wait to start getting some good painting videos i mean there's one or two videos with people painting one figure or something but uh i you know if anybody knows the way i've painted if you've watched my videos you know when i get into it i like to get into it uh i think a lot of people are actually scared to really hit these miniatures like i've heard people saying they were scared to start on the uh, iron throne and stuff so what i'm gonna do is this is gonna be a vlog lord willing uh beginning with uh a quick unboxing uh, I'll probably do more of an unboxing and a scale comparison since I know a lot of people have done just unboxings I'm gonna probably unbox these and kind of match them up to some of my miniatures because I do have a lot of period miniatures that would match these so it would be interesting to see if we can use some other miniatures uh, in the bases you know for some proxies so that's gonna be my approach to the vlog the next vlog I will probably look at separating these out trying to get an idea of what units go with what so we can decide what we're going to start painting and then the th by the third uh video on the vlog we're going to get right into painting because i mean that's that's what i'm anxious to start doing there's a lot of miniatures in here i will be going to gen con next week i'm hoping before i get to gen con that i can at least have maybe one faction done either the lannisters or the starks or even just a mercenary faction so that's what we're going to do We'll be right back and we'll show you what's in here. So this is everything that came with my pledge. And like I said again, I don't uh I don't think I got the biggest pledge you could get, but I did get one of the all-in pledges. So these are there are obviously stretch goals and things in here. Uh so what I'm gonna do first is kind of show you the different boxes that you get and uh I'll just kind of explain everything we're looking at or what we will be looking at as we go about this so let's just get started um, this isn't in any order so these are called Botan's bastard girls and basically this is a box of uh this is a box of uh hounds so i think reese Botan is the one that kept the hounds or used them in his army uh I don't think these would be that hard to paint. So we're going to open these, but I'm not going to open them just yet. For now, let's just show you what the boxes are. In case you're trying to buy somebody's pledge, for example. This is the Stark Bowman. So again, some basic Bowman. Not, not unlike Perry Miniatures, which I will compare these to. These are your Knights of Casterly Rock. Your mounted figures. Now... As far as I know, the mounted figures are one piece. I don't think they're separate. So we will check on that. That is something I'd like to take a look at. This is another box of Lannister. So again, when I was talking about factions, you know, you would have the, the Lannister uh, knights, the Lannister heroes, and then, of course, there'd be a Lannister army in the main box. But this is... Looks like there's five heroes in there 
I'm going to try to get through this pretty quickly. Again, Bolton's Flate, man. These are Reese Bolton's Knights. Who uh, got wiped out by, I think it was the Starks. Although they looked like they were about to beat the Starks until, uh, what was it, Peter Baelish showed up with, uh, I don't know, was it the Tullys? I think it was. What, whichever one, uh, was that like that Mariner, not the Mariner faction, the, the old crazy lady with the boy. This is a box of neutral heroes. So, for example, if we were doing factions, we would need to pull these out so that they would go with their faction. So there's Ramsey Bolton, Royce Boy Bolton, Theon Greyjoy, Peter Baelish, and Lord Varish. So, and again, I'll open these later. It's kind of, just right now, just kind of doing an inventory. The Stark Heroes. So, and that's their fact. Now, interestingly enough, let me see. Okay, I guess with the Starks, the two we would do together would be the heroes and the uh and the bowmen so if we're looking at doing these as uh factions it looks like from what i'm looking at now you got two two stark boxes and add-ons two lannister boxes and add-ons two bolton boxes and then a neutral so that actually makes it pretty simple if you're looking at, you know, how you should how you should approach doing these, right? Because you can obviously we're going to do the neutral either way. So we could open up the neutral to, as our first characters. That's going to give us somebody for each of these factions. I think it is. I see Bolton's Greyjoy. No, so the only faction that has characters in here is going to be the the Boltons. So if you do the neutrals, this is going to be mostly just for Boltons and the Greyjoys. Baelish and Lord Varish, I mean, I don't know where they fall. But the other ones, you've got two identifiable boxes that you could do to get you a faction completed. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is, let's push these to the back. We'll wait for that for a minute. And it's going to be this, which is... Just basically a box of stretch goals called the Hand of the King. And I think in here we got some characters. They are in Throne. That's what I was tell telling you. I think this will actually be quite easy to paint. I'm going to look at some images online. I already have an idea that maybe I might, I might mix up what I do with it, but uh, I don't really see that being a big problem to paint. Uh, I can't really identify all of these off the top of my head. What I can tell you is the reds are Lannisters. I believe these bluish grays are Starks. And then these may just be characters. Not sure if they're neutral or not. We have some tokens. I think these are... Yeah, these are like plastic ones. So one of the other things I might do, if you look at my boat action series, I, I kind of concluded that with a summation of the rules and my thoughts on some of the rules. So I'm hoping to do that as well with this. I haven't really got into the rules yet. I have looked at some uh, playthroughs online. I've watched a couple. So I got a, I got a basic idea. And then this is the main box. So, I mean, it really, you can get started with this without ever even opening this main box, which to be honest, you know, I might recommend depending on how comfortable you are, because this looks like it's going to have mostly troops. So you've got spears and shields and all that kind of stuff, which can discourage you. So I might even recommend if you're just getting started and you're going to kind of follow along that maybe what we should do is... We should just do like one of the quick boxes. I think there's only four miniatures in the uh, the mounted sets, for example. So we'll make our decision up on that once we start opening things. So that's kind of what you get. What I'm going to do now is move over to my other uh, table, 
we're going to take some of these out and then let's just do some scale comparison okay so this is going to be the first box we're going to take a look at is Bolton's Flate man let's just get it open and get started see what we got in here and like I said there's a lot of unboxings so forgive me if I kind of presume that most of you have already seen unboxings of some of these actual miniatures uh, so this is the basis and obviously this is the direction this would show you their uh, line of sight or I guess their front arc but we're going to take a look at these to see as far as uh, what else we can get in there. Now, I do know a lot of people on the uh, Facebook page have started magnetizing theirs. I don't really think I'm going to do that. I, I'm just, you know, I, I'm not into the magnetization. So if you want to do that, you might want to join the Facebook page. A Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, and you can get some tips on how you can magnetize it. I don't I don't really want to do that. So let's get these open. All right. So look at that. So that is a Bolton's Flate, man. It's a nice image. Very nice image. Very very nice model. Holy cow. Look at that. Look at that standard. I can see why people would be intimidated to start on these. I'm I'm starting to have second thoughts like, holy cow, maybe I'm not good enough to start on this. You know, how presumptuous of me. Wow. Look at this, man. Wow. Now, these are the kind of knights I've always envisioned, you know, when I when I see knights riding into charges. You know, I'll, I have a game called Journey to the Overland, and in my game, I tell people, I say, you know, a knight is something to be feared. You know, it's not like a lot of the images we have knights of today, you know, the kind of Monty Python light where, you know, the knight's armor is bulky and, you know, there's always some barbarian or something that's, that's uh, you know, that embarrasses them. You know, back in the medieval days, a knight was like a tank. I mean, they were totally to be feared. And I mean, if a knight ran you down, I mean, there was almost nothing you could do. And so this is the image that these figures conjure up. Now, I'm sure you guys noticed this seam line right there. So if that bothers you, you're going to have to feel that. I may feel one of them just to show you how you can do that with some green stuff. This one doesn't have it, so that's kind of weird. Let's check this one. This one, this one has it right here. So maybe the other one does on that side. Let's see. I don't know. Here looks like it got maybe it got closed up a bit, but I can see it there. So that's okay. I mean, these might have begun as multi-part models that they snapped together as part of the assembly process. So you are going to want to take care of that. These guys obviously don't come off the horses, which I have no problem with whatsoever. You will have a problem if you're trying to paint in there. Uh, the way I paint, that's not going to be a bother. I do like the bases have this texture. So you really don't have to uh, put any gravel or sand on there. It's not a lot, so you're not going to... I don't really know how much dry brushing would take but it is enough i mean as long as you don't over prime it or over paint it it's enough to keep that texture in there which would definitely save us some steps i mean these guys look awesome look at that flail so you get four of those which is that's another thing i actually like about the game whoa sorry guys i hit my stand but that's another thing i like about the game is that um the cavalry units are only four units but the way they do it to compensate for that is you can actually lose guys during the battle but then they can come back like you can your unit can heal wounds as they call it and uh then you would put the model back so say you begin as this rank you know with four guys here and you take two casualties right leaving two well you might have a card that allows you to bring one of them back so you, you don't have to have like 12 models on the board, you know, to really reflect a large unit. Instead, 
these units are, are very resilient. They're very durable. They will, they will hang around longer than, than four models would otherwise uh, leave you, lead you to believe uh, that they could. Now, I don't know how the cards work yet, but let's just take a look. So it has three wounds. That's another thing. So for example, if this room, this unit took nine hits, and then let's say it saved four, with those five, it would only lose two models. Now, I don't know if the other wound would be lost or if it would hold on to it, but at three wounds, it would only lose two models after nine hits, for example. So that's very powerful to be able to take three wounds. It does a critical blow. Rose of six costs two hits. Oh, I like that. De vicious defender suffers minus two to their panic test so i don't know if panic is the same as morale but i think the way the modifiers work here say you have to roll a four or higher to save if you have a minus two you need to roll six so yeah saying minus two i think is a little uh it might be a little confusing the way it actually works but we'll get into that maybe when we start some rules and then it says each time an enemy engaged with this unit fails a panic test one other enemy unit with wow that's pretty cool so basically if you put this unit in contact with a weak unit that you know is going to fail its panic test you can maybe make other units around it uh become panicked as well so it looks like they have a war flail that probably hits on three plus three or higher i don't know what the eight and six is for Things like they move five. Their shields are two plus. I guess that gives them two plus to their defense. I don't know what that six plus means. So we'll get we'll take a look at that. And it looks like from everything I can see, that's obviously their three wounds. And they're special. But from everything I can see, these actually look to be some excellent units. I wonder if you could fill two of these, two four man units of these. All right, so what we're gonna look at now is some scale comparison, okay? So what we are looking at here from right to left, this is an OGW uh, Knight, Mounted Knight, Bretonian. This is a GW Lord of the Rings uh, elf figure. This obviously is our Simon, uh Flailed man, and this actually is a fire forge Mongols, which obviously comes on a round base. Now, the first thing you are going to notice is there is no way none of these uh, figures could really proxy in on these bases. I mean, that's just these bases are probably 25% bigger than their bases. So, this looks like these are probably. They're not quite 40. I'd say these are maybe 30 to 35 millimeter. This is looks like a 50 millimeter square here or slot. Uh, as far as the models, the body goes, these are definitely bigger. I mean, Fire Forge miniatures tend to be true 25 millimeter. Same thing with... Uh, these are the Lord of the Rings. Again, this is closer to true 25 millimeter. I mean, his mount just makes them look like children. I mean, these things, they don't even make anymore. But I was just one of my mounted figures. Uh, I don't know if I... Uh, see, I don't have any mounted uh, Age of Sigmar guys. Or I would try to bring one of them out to show you. Because I'm really trying to get an idea what is what is closest in scale to these guys. Yeah, you know, there's not a lot of companies that are really doing mounted figures now. So, I mean, in a way that's good because you don't have to worry about mixing them. You can actually maybe use these guys for different things. But uh, they're definitely a lot bigger than any, than any, probably any other mounted figures you are going to have in your collection at the present time. Uh so that's pretty much a look at the uh, the boat and Flautman and the scale. Let's go grab the next box. Okay, so the next box we're going to open is the uh, Neutral Heroes. And again, I told you this is going to be mostly, looks like the Boltons. And Peter Baelish and Lord Varys. 
One thing I do like about the game is they have some of the non-combat guys that, uh, they actually play an influence on the battlefield, uh, through these, uh, I guess these political slots that you can occupy with them. And then a lot of them you can even attach to units. So I think that's pretty cool. You know, you, you depend on who you decide to bring. You know, it may add some kind of political element to your uh, faction. Uh, so let's take a look at these. One thing I am trying to do is hopefully I'm giving you guys some good close-ups. I know a lot of the videos on YouTube it was hard to get a good close-up. Like a lot of people either have bad cameras or they would never quite get close enough. So... These are the four we get in here. Again, this has excellent packaging, as you have come to expect from uh, too many or not. Uh, okay, let's see what we got. And here's the cards. This is Reese Bolton. Horrific rumors. The tactics board, that's what they call it. So if you put him, for example, on the tactics board or zone, it would no matter what the normal effect of that zone is, I guess once he claims that spot, two enemy units automatically become panicked, which that's kind of a cool element. You know, this guy was basically demented. So... I guess when the enemy hears word that Reese Bolton is commanding, two of them become panicked. Just like that. So here's the first figure. And I think this is, is this Reese or Ramsey? This is Reese Bolton. Now remember, these are based on the book. So these aren't based on the television show. But again, there's a, hopefully that'll give you some real good detail. Man, I love the beautiful models, man. For, I can't believe these are like plastic. And the nice thing about them is there's no bendy swords. I was looking at some uh, massive darkness pledges the other day. And man, I, it was just almost everything you pulled out of there was either bent or twisted. So this has totally, they've totally gotten this corrected. I think that's Ramsey. Again, not based on the television show. Lord Varus. Look at that. Look at that. And see, this stuff is not that hard to paint. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of people are like wringing their hands over it. I could paint probably, you know, all five of these in an afternoon. Oh, Peter, Peter Baelish. Yeah, again, these are based on the book, people. Yes, that's Peter Baelish. So I'm saying that because I don't know. I think it's hard to see if he has a mustache or but his goatee. And then last but not least is the Greyjoy, the Reek version. And I've seen some good paint jobs of this on uh, the Facebook page. So you definitely want to check that out if you want to do Reek. Mm. Okay, so that's actually a quick look at, uh, let me get these in the right spot. That's actually a quick look at the miniatures in this set which is a very very nice set i have no problem with this uh i just have to decide what order i'm gonna paint these in now before we go to the next uh the next box because i hope you guys are enjoying these close-ups i want to show you something so this is the uh flayed man and I think I found a miniature, a mounted miniature that comes close in scale. And I, I, I don't, th I think you guys are going to be a little bit surprised. Let me get the stand out here. 
but this is a privateer press mounted figure uh i don't know what he is i you know he's part of one of their factions or leaders or whatever but you can see that base looks like it's about 50 millimeters you know they both kind of uh they have kind of the same uh volume so to speak and let's just let's just put them in the tray so we got this one fits perfectly this base is a little too big you can't see that but it's it's a it's a little big you can get it in there snug right and it's not going to come out but if he was charging with them you would not have any problem proxying him in as a leader and with all that armor from the private press world he almost fits in perfectly so that is some options. You might want to look at some of your privateer press figures and see about using them. I actually have some, I think, some privateer press guys with pistols. Wow. So I would love to do up a unit, you know, stat up my own unit that is mounted outriders with pistols, right? But I think that's a good match. I mean... Maybe the uh, maybe the uh, Song of Ice and Fire miniature is maybe ten percent, eight percent bigger, but it's it's almost imperceptible. And I mean, once these got painted, I don't think you you perceive it at all. All right, let's get to the next okay, box. So sticking with the Boltons, let's look at Boltons bastards. Which is a unit of hounds. Now, I watched the movie, but well not the movie, but the TV series. I don't even remember the hounds being on the battlefield. Now, I might be mistaken in that battle that uh, he had with uh, the Starks. But I just don't remember the hounds being actually on the battlefield. I know he kept them at his fortress, and I think Reese was eventually fed to his own house. So we have the base. And this looks clearly more like your 25, I mean, 30 millimeter base. It's 28 to 30 millimeter. So it's funny that the horse bases are way larger. Bolton, Bolton's Bastard Girls. So we some figures in here. Get you guys some close-ups. Uh, now I'm hoping to finish this series up. Now as long as the uh, motivation remains. Uh, but if you want to make sure I finish it, make sure you subscribe, so I can at least see that there's some, uh, you know, some some new people taking a look at the content and. You know, planning on coming back. Let's see if I can get this to focus. That's not focusing. Now right, let's try this. Uh, doesn't want to focus. Let's try that. It's so funny. They spend all this money on this technology. Every time these cameras come out, they brag about how great they are. And then when you get them in real use, you know, it takes you forever to get them to focus. Something simple as focusing. So let's try this guy. Let's see. Maybe he's a little bit better or easier to focus on. Sometimes you've got to move it around. Then try to focus it. No. All right, there we go. So he's basically an archer. Nothing particularly special. Again, some good detail in the facial area. I don't know how much closer I can get it and still keep it in focus. But you should get a good look at it. He almost reminds me of some of the Dragonlands. The Dragonlance Archer. This is the same guy. So you get two of the same sculpts. And then you get two of these. I like this one. 
This one actually looks like a kind of a boat and fleet man archer. Oh, that's a good image right there. That's your money shot. So if any of you are looking at this to paint it, you better pause it right now. I just gave you your money shot. Let's see if, if it'll stay focused with this one. There we go. Yeah. He does look like that guy from Dragonlance. I forgot what his name was. Uh, and then the dogs or the hounds. And you actually have several, you have different types of hounds. I think you have at least two or three different types. There's some different poses. So, I mean, this one is obviously some type of a pit bull. These look like just some regular hounds. Coon dogs, as they call them in the south or down south. So you get several sculpts. I really like that. Nice models. So what we're going to do real quick now is we're going to take our first scale comparison of the uh, the unmounted figures, right? You, you're running a male standard. Okay, guy. and so we're back with a quick scale comparison. Now, this is actually uh, much more... This is actually much more uh, hopeful, much more promising, this scale comparison. Obviously, this is our uh, Song of Ice and Fire miniature, standard 28 millimeter, 30 millimeter figure. And this is a range of other figures. I tried to find one of almost every other thing I have. So this is a Mythic Battles Pantheon game that I used to have. Uh, but this is one of the figures I have left from it. This is a Megalith Games God Slayer. And I'll show you a close-up of that. This is a Privateer Press figure. This is just a Reaper Bones Thug, which I thought would be good with the Boltons. A Frostgrave figure. And this is uh, the Game of Thrones line from Dark Sword Miniatures. So let's take a look at that first. So let's see if we can get this to focus. There we go. So this is how he matches up with one of the Game of Thrones figures. I mean, that's, 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 that's very good. The bases, perfect match, perfect match. So that's very good. Let's try a frost gray figure. This one, I expect a little bit of a difference. Frost gray scale is somewhere between 25 and 28. See if we can get this to focus. Okay. I actually doesn't want to focus no more. Which I don't know why this camera is doing me like this today. Maybe it's upset because I haven't used it in a while. Let's bring it down and bring it back in. You can almost see the scale though here, even even though the features aren't showing up good. Now, obviously, these bases, this, this base is about 20% 20, 20 bigger than that one. But, there we go. So, that's him right next to a frost gray figure. Again, indistinguishable. I mean, if this guy was in your party and he was your bowman, the difference in him is no different than, you know, one man you meet on the street or another, you know. If I was standing next to an athlete, I mean, that's kind of kind of the difference in size. The next one, see if we can leave him here and keep him in focus. This is actually a Reaper miniature, one of their thugs. And this guy is actually, to me, he actually looks a little bit bigger. This is like one of the first ones that actually looks bigger than the Song of Ice and Fire figure. So that's interesting. Let's do the Private Air Press. Again, I think the Privateer Press miniatures scale up better with these than, than anybody else's line. Even from the bases are pretty much identical. Or they are identical other than the, the thickness. But even the volume is just almost perfect with Privateer Press. This is Megalith Games Godslayer figure. 
So you could actually use him as one of the uh, proxies for some of the overseas kingdoms. I'm trying to f trying to remember the name of that one kingdom where they were uh, they were holding one of the uh, the Lannister daughters hostage or something, and they poisoned her. But I mean, you could almost see them in a guy like this. Some of the kingdoms that maybe the Khaleesi freed their soldiers. But again, a standard 28 millimeter base. Almost no difference whatsoever. And last but not least, your uh, Mythic Battles Pantheon. Obviously, the bases aren't going to match up. But, you know, I don't see any difference. The scale comparison is just spot on. So that's going to give you a good idea of if you just want to buy a box of these and use them for something else. Like so you have no interest in the game per se, whether you're a role player or, you know, you just want to proxy them in. The, I would say the, the, the miniatures, the, the, the unmounted miniatures can be proxied into anything, right? I don't think you're going to have a problem proxying these, these miniatures into anything else you're, you're playing with. I mean the dogs. I mean that that looks that looks about right. That looks probably better than the actual frost grave dogs, which are a little bit too big for the figures. Yeah, you know, look at this guy. So if you're looking at buying this box set just because you just want the figures, I think most of these are gonna retail for like thirty five dollars. You know, and that, that doesn't include any discount your retailer will give you or online. Uh, I would definitely do it. If I didn't get it and I saw this video, all oh, these things would be going in my buy list depending on what I like. So let's get to okay, the so next box. So we're going to do our first Lannister box here. Now, I probably won't do any more scale comparisons until I get to uh, maybe Gregor Clegane. The mountain that rides just to maybe show you how... He compares to some other large figures. Uh, but the rest of these, I think you can rely on the scale comparison we already did. So this is the Lannisters who always pay their debts. Uh, Hopefully, the focus will hold up. Like I said, I'm not going to really get into their cards in this video. Hounds Fury. Plus one to hit and Vicious. Wow, suffers D3 wounds. So you roll a D6 and... Divided although they may there may be a d3 in here so right off the bat This is uh that Tywin Lannister So I'm not sure how much detail you're capturing with this that red is hard to focus on but there you go So again, he's based off of the book It's kind of got that Darth Vader Claw going on this is a Pycel. So I think he was a member. Of, what do they call that? The Little Council or something like that. This is uh, the High Sparrow. I don't really think he was part of the Lannister faction. I mean, isn't he the guy that abused uh, Cersei? Which I was glad to see finally somebody finally get you know stand up to her. Now this is Sandor Clegane, right? This is not Gregor Clegane. Uh, so this is the Hound as opposed to the Mountain, which he's a big dude. But I don't think I need to show you a scale comparison. I mean he's he's just a big dude. But again, hopefully you're getting some of the detail in this figure. You know, that's one of the reasons I wanted to do my own unboxing. And of course, everyone's favorite Tyrion Lannister. Which I don't think I ever saw Tyrion wielding an axe in the TV show. 
Now, maybe he had one in the book, a little axe, or maybe they just wanted to do that in case you wanted to proxy him in as a dwarf. But I don't think I ever saw him in a show wielding an axe. I mean, you would think he would have had to have one custom made to hold it with one hand like that. But, you know, who am I? Excellent model nonetheless. I've seen different paint jobs on these. Uh, I'm not necessarily sold on some of the ones I've seen yet so far. Uh, so I'll definitely be trying to uh, kind of do my own take with these. Uh, he's a commander. So I wonder what his card's going to have on it. Because that was like his forte in the... Uh, at least in the TV show was his ability to command on the field so let's get this and then another quick look at Sandor Clegane all right so let's get to the next box I want to kind of uh, wrap this up I think the video is getting a so little next long. up are the Knights of Casterly Rock my favorite scene with them is when they face off against Daenerys' dragon I mean, actually, they run it off. I don't know about the knights, but they actually run that dragon off. It winds up getting wounded, which I'm not sure. Is that the same one that gets killed and winds up becoming a zombie dragon, a white walker dragon? Which I had a feeling that was going to happen. I didn't read the books, but I'm like, she must not, a, she must not know her enemy. You don't want to leave a dragon there to turn over a dragon to this guy. So you get your regular base. Your card, expensively armed and equipped. Movement of five, three plus, three wounds. So this is kind of not too different than the flight man's, but they have the lances. Critical blow, rolls of six deal two hits, and sundering. Lannister Supremacy. So far from all the playthroughs I've seen, man, the Lannisters are actually the the uh, the Uber units, like the Uber faction. I mean, if, if you are playing against your kids or anybody that, you know, is not familiar with war games, give them the Lannisters. Because right there, they, they are going to have a an advantage. I just think these guys, from what I've seen with the play, have have like the perfect mix of uh, hitting and staying power and diplomacy and controlling the battlefield and everything else. So we're trying to get a good image. Now I'm never really a fan of these color unit things. You know, one is red and all that stuff. I mean, I know why they do it, but I don't really like it because I think it doesn't really... Uh, yeah, you know, it can it can sometimes make it hard to see, you know, how good your model or sculpt is. This doesn't want to focus. There we go. Now if we can take it down a bit. Nope, I guess it won't let us take it down any. Let's try it again. Alright, so let's just leave it there. So you can see the uh lion the lion rampant on their standard no real barding it looks like cloth but the horses don't have do not have barding unlike the boat and flayed men's horses but again that red makes it very difficult to see a lot of the detail in these guys you know because of the, the red plastic i'm saying but that's one of their standard bears this is one of their lances So that's kind of funny. But this guy's shield almost looks like a dragon or a. Although I thought their symbol was a lion. Dang, that's that same mode line. Now you know where to find the mode lines on these figures. I think most of these are the same pose. So you get three of these poses with the, the spears. The lances or spears tilted up like that. Man, 
Uh, let's see if we can find. There's our gap. Yep, that's our gap. Wow. So I don't know whether I'm going to clean that up or not. I guess I'm going to have to because that, that would bother. For some reason, this spear is bent. And you saw I just took this out the package. Just knifed it up. You can see where this spear has been bent. Which I think... I don't know, maybe when I took the other one out, it bent it. Or maybe when they put this in, the thing bent it. But, I mean, that won't show up when I paint it or prime it. But, yeah, that's kind of annoying. I don't know where that came from. Because I took this out and it's bent. You know, not bendy as in rubbery, but bent as in it was forced in there and it bent a little. So that was, that's odd. I don't know why that happened with that one. Because that looks like it could have easily snapped. And that would have been a problem then. Then we would have had a problem. Wow. Yeah, so be careful when you are taking these out. Uh, I don't know whether that happened when I was pulling the other one out or whether it was just like that. I think it was just like that. Because I don't think the other one was laying underneath it. Which would it would have had to have been doing to pull it back like that. So again, I'm not going to do a scale comparison of these. Uh, I mean, these are all right figures. I would not, you know, I would not say that they're gorgeous like I said I with that red plastic it's kind of hard to really appreciate them I will take a look at them when I start painting them up and let's get to the next box though I think we got the Stark so we are going to look at the Stark Bowman and again I'm going to open these on camera because I want you guys to be my witness in case any of these guys are deformed or their feet are snapped or anything like that I mean I understand things happen in production runs and I don't have a problem with that but I would hope that uh, who many or not would, uh, you know, set up some kind of process once they're through delivering to say, okay, now that everybody has their sets, as you go through them, if you find mistakes or miscasts, here's how you can get them corrected. I think that would be very, very, very good customer service. Uh, I know one guy said he had some figure that was missing a piece of its foot. So again, we have the bases, standard 28 millimeter. This is their cards for the Bowman. So I don't really think these are gonna be all that remarkable. Just some more archers. So let's see, it's no sense in dragging this out. Let's take a look here. Now let's see if we can try to hurry it up so it would just focus. Like don't even think about it, just focus. There we go. There we go. That is a very clean, very clean looking figure. I got to say, there's almost no flash on some of these. I mean, there's a piece there as soon as I say there's almost no flash. <laughs> yeah, okay. Show me up on camera. But, uh, I mean, that's a very clean looking figure. You can see the uh, chain mail, you know, part of the standard. I think that's like a wolf. For their faction. Uh, so let's see the different poses. You got this guy kind of like deciding who he's going to fire at. Or holding his fire for the last minute. You know he looks kind of grizzled. Another one looks on the left looks a little bit younger. Uh, so those are two of your poses. And then these are your last two poses. Of course, I've lost my focus now. Let's see if we can get this to focus in again. Well, that's a nice close-up shot. Whether you wanted it or not. I think I can see this guy's mustache. I like the guy on his knee fire, and that's actually a good pose. You can put this guy right over him, right, or beside him. 
They both have their emblems. And then you get a box of those. I mean, like I said, that's, that's pretty unremarkable. You get a total of four poses in the box. And a total of three, six, twelve miniatures. So... Now, I am assuming these guys definitely should have some range. Arrow volley, they hit on four plus. Oh, they have short swords. So, I guess they don't put the range on here. I don't see anything that would indicate range. But, I guess that's just part of how they shoot. It says rows plus four dice. So I guess if they stand still, it just it's a larger volume of arrows. Movement is five. So we will get into, like I said, the stats in a future video. We will start to break apart what some of these stats mean. Although, like I said, the videos I've seen, the Starks have had some problems dealing with the Lannisters. My approach, I think, is going to be, if I play the Starks, is going to be to deny the Lannisters their political options. Meaning, you're not going to, you know, what they do on the field, they're going to do, which I think the Starks can deal with that. But I think you're going to have to almost try to keep them out of the uh, tactics board. You're going to have to try to make sure they, they can never occupy their ideal spot on the tactics board, which obviously is... For them, I think it's the spot called the crown or something. All right, so again, this is our Stark Heroes, number one. Yes, and I did notice that one, so I wonder what's going to be in two. Is Rob in here? No. So that's why it's number one, because there is no Rob Stark in here. Uh... There's Eddard. I think Rob is in the box. But I mean, there's no Jon Snow in here. Uh, I do like that brand in Hodor, though. I think they did one of those with Dark Sword miniatures that I was never able to get. So I'm very glad to see that. I don't know. This must be Brandon Hodor's base. The Dire Wolf. Maybe it's the Dire Wolf's base. This guy is like his own unit from what I've seen in the playthroughs. Roger Castle. Isn't this the guy who they who, who Rob Stark beheaded and then his sons were mad at him for the majority of the series? <laughs> he's like, you killed our father? And he's like, yeah, he was a traitor. I'm not sure, but I mean, he just kind of reminds me of that guy. This should be a nice start box for some close-ups. So here's the dire wolf. Uh, now Rob's dire wolf was called. Uh, what was he called? This one is called Summer. So I don't think this would be Rob's dire wolf. So I don't think Rob's was named Summer. And yes, that's his. Uh, that's his base. The next figure we have, and I'm going to have to look this guy up, is Howlin' Reed. Don't necessarily remember him. Excellent model. Excellent sculpt. I just want to make sure you're not going to lose any detail in that face. This is Eddard Stark. I saw another guy do a review who said Eddie Stark's ability on the tactic board is to quickly lose his head. So I think everybody's been real hard on Eddard Stark going out of getting getting put out of the Game of Thrones so quickly. But you got to kind of understand the game doesn't begin until Eddard Stark loses his head. And that's when the Game of Thrones actually begins. This is uh, Roderick Castle. Again, the one I said I think they got beheaded by Rob Stark. Definitely a nice figure. This is Brendan Tully. So I think somebody said this was Catherine Tully's brother. I don't quite remember him in the series. I think he got 
killed early on too. And then Brandon Hodor. Yeah, like one of my most touching, actually probably my most touching scene of the movie, believe it or not, out of all of the series that have that have, that have went, I'm up to series seven. I don't, I mean, yeah, I think I watched all of seven, but not eight. Was when Hodar, you have the flashback of of Hodar. Brand has this flashback of Hodar, and he's having that seizure, and he's going hold the door, hold the door, hold the door, hold the door, which is basically hold the door. I just felt so bad for that little kid there in that state like that, you know, that he was like being tormented by that future image of him having to hold that door. And he did hold that door. So yeah, I just I kinda I kinda got a real soft spot in, in my heart for uh for Hodar for that. Excellent model by the way. Excellent set. This was actually a, a nice this is actually a pretty nice uh set. So once again, uh, we're ready to go with those. Okay, so having done all of that, I think I'm going to wrap this video up, compile all of these, and put them up so you guys can start watching them. I'm not going to do the box, the main box, and the uh, Hand of the King box yet. So I will do those, uh, you know, as we as we get to those. I think right now, I think just kind of showing some of these these uh, I don't know if they're expansions, but some of these other sets uh, should give you an idea. Uh, I think what I'll do in the next video is I will look at the main main box and the hand of the king box, just so we do have those unboxings for people who would like close ups. All right, take care, everybody. Uh, like I said, if you get a chance, look at the video, uh, for the 600 subscriber giveaway. It's going to give you an idea of whether I'm going to be putting up more content on the channel. I'm still thinking about setting up that Patreon page. So maybe hopefully it'll be up by the next one and that'll help me to make up my mind. But I do, I would like to do finish this series up either way. Take care. God bless.